Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about using per layer editing or adaptive layering with inside the S ICE SL program. I'll spit that one out. So on the screen, I have uh, a propeller holder for the Spark, DJI Spark, that I designed up. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting design because of the curves you see sitting here. And one of the things, I have a bit of a problem printing this out, and especially since I really don't use supports on the curved uh, ends of this. And thirdly, I'm going to print this in TPU, which is a challenging plastic. So this is why I'm going to go the route of using some ad adaptive layering uh, in this. So one of the first things I'm going to do is go over here and pull up my panel. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to set my thickness and so I'm going to pull this guy down. Whoops, I'm going to pull this guy down to the very bottom because one of the things I want to do is I want to start this guy out at the bottom at 0.3 millimeters. So I want a thick bottom plate on this guy um, because I'm going to get this, this bottom piece here where the bulk of it is. So I'm going to set that to, to 0.3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to uh, add one and uh, I'm going to move it up. And then one of the things you kind of have to watch where where you're at in the um, object because you can see these black lines here. Hopefully you can see these black lines. Uh, so that shows what layer I'm at with inside the object itself. Now I'm getting to the top layer here and notice my measurement in millimeters. So I'm at zero millimeters here. So I'm at the very start. I'm at 1.448 millimeters here. And I want to move up just a little bit because I want, <coughs> excuse me, I want to go just until I get finish my top layer. And then so I want to go a little bit past my top layer because what I'm going to do for my very top layers is I'm going to change this to 0.1 millimeter. So now you see the shading. Now I'm going to pull this up a little bit higher and see how this adjusts it a little bit. Um, because I want to make sure I get the top at 0.3. And notice, because notice notice the color as I pull it up, uh, where it starts to come in at. And so I'm sort of util utilizing that a bit as my gauge to where I want to change to point 0.1. Because I want to get the body of this over here, um, you know, printed at point 0.3. Because I want it to go fairly quickly, and this part really doesn't matter very much but now you start to see I start coming into more of the curve here and I want the curve to be better formed so this is why I'm going to drop down to 0.1 millimeter for the rest of it I think pretty much I'm going to leave that set there because I'm going to finish this out at 0.1 millimeters as it goes to the top now the piece is I want to go back through here and I want to now uh, go to my print speed and so I want to pull this down. So print speed, I'm okay. I'm going to go to back down to zero. And it um, takes a little bit to get the set to zero. I don't want to go below. I don't think you can uh, type in it to set it to zero. So you literally have to just kind of get it down here at zero. So this will be fine right here because I'll start it dead. So I'm going to start it out at 50 millimeters per second. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a plus, and then I'm going to take this guy up. And again, I'm going to watch where I come in at. And uh, about the same height where I came in with my um, uh, point 0.1, what I want to do is I will also not only do I want to go to point 0.1, but I want to drop this to around 25 uh, millimeters per second. So I want to slow this down quite a bit uh, once I come to this this part. I'm going to scooch this up a little bit. Uh, actually what I want to do is I want to go back to this one. So I'm at, uh, I should have made note of this, so I'm at 1.984 uh, and then so let's go over here. I'm going to take this up to uh, one roughly one 
about there. It's kind of hard to get it exact, but yeah, that's pretty close. So roughly about where it kicks in for um, the uh, point one is where we will kick it in for the slower speed. Now the other piece, um, now this is the general print speed, parameter print speed, uh, or perimeter, sorry, not parameter, perimeter print speed at 40. Um, I'm going to go down, I'm going to readjust this, and then I'm also going to do, drop my print speed, 1.9. So I'm going to place this approximately where the last one is, and I'm going to drop this to about um, 30. Now I'm going to go 25. Now, a little bit of this is you, you're going to have to kind of play around. Obviously, slower, you're going to get better resolution. Finer numbers like 0.1 versus 0.3, you're going to get better resolution. So a little bit of this is common sense and, you know, experimenting with it. So now I have these set over here. Now, um, the other thing I want to set is going to be, be my infill percentages. This is going to be a big one. Because what I'm going to do is down here at the bottom, uh, I'm going to have it set to 20. But as I go back up here, I'm going to set this to basically 100% infill. So I want these to be basically complete solid objects. And so this is a big one. So I'm shifting my infill strategy here. Uh, Let's see, what are the other things? Print first layer, printer, editing. I'm just looking, oh, my extrusion temperature. So one of the big things with this extrusion temperature since, um, well, actually, I just need to go back here and change this to the one house. Sorry about that. Uh, I need to change the extrusion temperature to 255. That's going to be my base extrusion temperature. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some resetting on this. Uh, because one of the things at zero, I'm going to leave it at 255. But I tell you what, up here, I'm going to increase it a little bit because I want it to be a little bit more fluid. So I'm going to go to 260. Um, I'm going to kick it up about five degrees uh, at this point. And let's see, I think I'm probably pretty happy with everything else. Uh, number of covers in shells, uh, I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm going to actually click uh, shells up to two. Uh, but I'm just going to leave that set. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and slice this now. And we're going to go ahead and print it on the Wanhao, and we're going to see how it comes out. So let's head over to the Wanhao and see what happens. Okay, we're back. So we watched the time lapse of this being printed. A little hard to see against the white. Came out beautiful. Um, here's a version that I did in PLA at 0.3 millimeters. And you can kind of see the stepping. Maybe I'll see if I can zoom in on this, the stepping here a little bit versus the stepping on this. So again, when we went to make the oval piece here, what I did is I used the 0.1 millimeters, as you remember, and then I made it a solid fill. So this is, is really nice uh, compared to this. And as far as a product, this is this is basically could be a commercially viable product. There's a little bit of adjustment I would do on retraction because I've got a few nubbins here that I would like not to have. And probably I wouldn't up the temperature again to 260 
uh, for this. I think I just leave it at 255, but I wanted to demonstrate changing the temperature, how you can change the temperature at different layers. Um, you know, because this 100% basically uh, would have printed out, I think, just fine at 255. Uh, so all in all, I, I'm still really impressed with Ice SL for what it can do. It, it, it's got some bugs, but uh, nothing that can't be worked past, you know, especially if you're willing to put in a little bit of effort, and it's free. And so uh, you can do adaptive layering. And this is one of the things I think is important. Um, you know, because if you're going to do sort of a maker type business or something, you need a slicer that has the power uh, of something like IsaCell Ice versus something like Cura or Slicer. You know, those are great if you just want to do something simple, whap it off, create a little poly something or another, uh, do this, that, or the other thing. From a hobby perspective, I think they're great. Uh, however, from a perspective of producing a commercially viable part, or a commercially viable part from a prototype standpoint, you need a lot more power. So anyways, this without question gives you that power and I'm very impressed with it. So anyways, big thumbs up. If you got questions, uh, got comments, suggestions, hit me up down below in the comment section. Love to hear them. Already got some good feedback from one viewer, Colin, uh, wrote back about a bug he had found in the retraction portion of the Luna code, uh, which the dev is fixing. And so if you run across something, hey, please make sure to let me know down below. And also join the uh, ISSL form. I'll have a link to that down below also. I think it uh, would be really good if we get quite a few viewers to join and really get some support behind this and see where the dev can take this. Because, again, I'm really excited about having this type of power for free. So, anyways, don't forget to swag shop, subscribe. See you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.